and to to share something that is very key very pivotal in our christian work very key this is every year every year I, I i try to share about spirit soul and body because uh, the moment i go to understand that my life changed i found that it was easy to understand many things in the christian work you got that and for many christians there is a great struggle because of not understanding that and its functionality praise the lord it is a real best it's like what should i say it's like understanding algebra in mathematics yeah, if you've done mathematics if you never understand algebra <laughs> <laughs> you know it's you you will just be like like what you'll be like an, an elephant on a tree yes. we don't know how you got there but very soon you're coming down you get what i mean yeah, you can go on and on and i know many of you can many of you can attest to this that's why you didn't continue with math isn't it <laughs> the moment you didn't understand algebra now yeah there's no hope Hallelujah. Yeah, but this is very crucial especially in understanding our Christian work. This is very very crucial, very fundamental. And definitely we are going to be getting into deeper things with just finish we've been talking about consecration, we've talked about the anointing within the anointing upon and we want to talk up we 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 are going to get into into deeper things. So this is normally like it's normally like a not a buffer but it's like a baseline like we normally come back to this because you know there are many questions about tongues many questions about hearing the voice of god many questions about operating in the anointing eternal redemption and all that and you realize that all these things are connected to spirit soul and body very connected it's key to understand that hallelujah so this is god speaking to through ezekiel as the prophet He's telling him, "Say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord, I do not, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went, and I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen." which ye have profaned in the midst of them and the heathen shall know that i am the lord saith the lord god when i shall be sanctified in you before their eyes for i will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you unto into your own land then i will sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will i cleanse you praise the lord now this is this is very interesting that all this that god is doing in i when when you read ezekiel 36 you read the whole chapter you get to realize that salvation being born again regeneration does not actually begin with you it does not start with you you know that is what many of us thought we when you would be asked how did you get born again why do you say you are born again why do you say yourself you know what people say i stopped doing this and this then i got saved i got my act together i did this but you see god is telling us this the children of israel he's saying they had profaned his name they were a reproach there's nothing of testimony about them yet god says he's going to change them and not for their sake but for his sake during the time that we were sharing i think about consecration as telling us that we are saved we are born again because god wants to continue his his lineage on earth his genealogy has to continue on earth he was in heaven and he decided to extend his kingdom to earth and he created Adam and Eve and he created Adam and Eve the devil was not happy that they were here and the kingdom of God was going to continue in this place 
So he went and sent Jesus Christ. And Jesus came and died for us. And after Jesus died for us, we were born again. Made children of God again. Praise the Lord. So that the life, the DNA of God can continue on earth. And it is his own, it is for his own sake. So when people see you as a child of God, when they see God at work in you, yeah, God's name is glorified. God brings glory to himself through us when he saves us. It is just like a parent who has children. Many parents are so proud of, yeah, my children are in whatever university you went to. Praise the Lord. Your dad used to tell people, hallelujah. If, if he never told people. But you know, so some parents actually do it for their sake. You get what I mean? Yeah. They will force you to do a particular course. They will force you to go to a particular university. It is for their sake. So that as they walk around the village, or you walk around the village, they, they, they actually, they want, when you come back home, they want you to walk when people are awake, like when, when people are around. Yeah, the market day, you know. That's when they want you to walk around so that people can ask you, what are you doing in university? Because glory goes to your father. <laughs> Not in heaven, on earth. Your father who is here on earth. He says, what are you doing? I'm doing engineering. Oh, wow. Hey, have you had so-and-so son? He's doing engineering. So your, your dad is, you know. That's why you see that the, the more of you as his children went to university, the bigger his chest grew. Did you realize that? Yes, he, yeah, now you know. Yeah, so he used to be like this, but one of you went, the chest came out. Another one went, the chest came out. Now the five of you have gone through university. He, he moves out. You know, he says hi to everyone on the village. I imagine that is how men of our earthly fathers think. They feel like it's an M. They feel like they are the failures when you fail. Now, God realized that the children of Israel, his people that had been set apart for him, were not doing him any good. He could not walk out there with his chest up. And as much as they tried, even when he put them in the best university and told them the course to do, and got them the best tutors, they were still failing. So he tells Ezekiel to prophesy to them, I don't need any more effort from them. I will do this myself. I'll take away that stony heart. I'll sprinkle them with clean water. You know, that my name shall not be profaned anymore among the heathen. That the heathen shall be able to see the glory of God in their lives. Hallelujah. These will be the ones that carry God. Yeah. Verse 23, and I'll sanctify my great name. So you know, you'd think you would sanctify his great name by telling some artists to print it on a banner and just run it around those hidden people. You get what I mean? Saying the name of Jesus, so brand it, let it be a branding, let's do marketing on it, let it be the most known thing. But he would sanctify his name by changing lives. And that is what he does till today. And yesterday and, and, and Tuesday we were here having a training, evangelism training. And this is what we were talking about. As we go preach the gospel, we get people born again. We are raising that banner that has the name of Jesus everywhere. And that is what he was talking about in this place. He says that the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. It is so amazing that with all the miracles and the mighty things that happened, that the heathen still never knew that he is God. Isn't that amazing? Because things happened. These guys took cities. They conquered cities. They feared the God of the Jews. But they did not know him as God. Knowing him as God was going to come from his offspring, lineage, him having an offspring. 
That is how he was going to be known as God. The mighty miracles that were done by the hands of Moses, Joshua, all these people were not enough. It was God coming and making a people to be his children. People that, people that have something that you can only attribute to having a relationship with God. Praise the Lord. That that is when he would be sanctified in them, in the children of Israel, before the eyes of the, before the eyes of the heathen. Twenty-four. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries, and will bring you into your own land. Hallelujah. When God was saying that He would bring the children of Israel out of among these people, definitely that that uh, prophetically it it was also talking about it being literal. A time would come, like right now, we see that there is Israel that is established. And even up to the, even this week, there are Jews that were taken from Ethiopia. You see, the Jews that are, are being relocated, that are being taken back from wherever they were scattered in the world. Even this very week, there are some that were taken back from Ethiopia. So, prophetically, it was talking about that also. That they would be gathered from those nations where they had been scattered. And they would have a land of their own. They would have a nation of their own. But to us who are not physical Jews. This is what he's meaning. That he will take us out of the heathen. He will bring us into a bubble. He will bring us into eternal life. That we will have a life that is not subject to the natural life around us. He will bring us out of them. He's brought us out of them. Praise the Lord. That when they are depressed, you can be full of joy. You can have some joy to dispense. Praise the Lord. When they are anxious, you have peace to give. That I'll bring you out of them. Then his name shall not be profaned. His name shall be exalted. Praise the Lord. And God is a very wonderful God. That he just chose to do this. He didn't wait for us to pay him. Can you imagine? That when he was in heaven... It is you that he zeroed on. It is you that he chose. But if I'm going to be glorified on earth, it has to be through this person. It has to be through you. That people should see you and see his glory. Hallelujah. Very amazing. Yeah. And says that he will clean us from all filthiness. And from all your idols will I cleanse you. Yeah, 26. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. Praise the Lord. I'll take away a stony heart. A stony heart is a heart that is not sensitive. A heart that cannot respond to the dictates of God. A heart that cannot respond to that. And this is what happened when, this is exactly what happened when, when Adam and Eve sinned. It is like they gave up, they died. So they gave up their heart. We explained heart is the, your innermost being. The same word, the same Greek word, Hebrew word that is used for heart here is the same that is used. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. It is the same word that is used for that. Your innermost being. So when he says that the day you eat of the fruit, you shall surely die. They did not die physically. They died spiritually. Which is worse than physical death. Praise the Lord. It is worse than physical, physical death. Because they became so... They got stony hearts. Hearts that were not sensitive. They could not, they could not read the wavelength of God. God came to them. Like he used to come in the cool of the day. He came to them. He came to, 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 to just have fellowship with them. And they were hiding. And you see, as if God tell, asking them, where are you? You know, you would think that as a human being, you would just think, oh, maybe he doesn't know that we sinned. We better come out and act like we didn't sin. You get what I mean? So 
We are naked. Who told you you're naked? You know, if I were Adam, I would tell you, don't, don't explain. Let's just go out and say, Let, let's go say we are joking. <laughs> you know, you would feel like he does not know. Let, let's, let's go say, we were joking with you. We were, we were, we were just... Because it seems he doesn't know. You get what I mean? But what does that show us? That God was still coming to them. He knew, but he was not, he was not, he was not, he, he was coming to them. He wanted them. And so after that, because now they had got a stony heart, they could not, they could not understand his love. They could not receive his love. They could not communicate at the same level. And God tried, so who told you? And, you know, he tried to give, to, to give them, they took fig leaves and all that. He didn't help, he gave them, he covered them himself. It could not all help. And the Bible says he took them, still because of his love, he took them out of the Garden of Eden. The Bible says, lest they eat of the tree of life and live forever. They would have lived forever in sin. But because he's a loving God and he had a redemption plan for them, he didn't want them to eat of the tree of life, because if they ate of the tree of life, they would never be redeemable. They would live eternally as sinners. We, there would be no hope for us. So he kept them echoes of love. Contrary to what many of us were told, God was annoyed, steamed from his nose. Get out of my garden. How could you eat my apples? But... Yeah, but you see, the Bible tells us that they were kicked out because he didn't want them. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of the of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Hallelujah! And to show you that God was not mad at them, God kept coming to them. God would speak to them. Listen to Cain's response. When God asked Cain, where is your brother? Am I my brother's keeper? That's not how you speak to God if you're hearing his voice for the first time. <laughs> you get what I mean? If that's the first time God is speaking to you, that is not how you speak to him. Yeah? That's not even how you speak to your dad. Praise the Lord. So these were people that were familiar. But... They had hearts of stone. They could never relate with him at the level he wanted the relationship to be. They could never because they had hearts of stone. And later he brought the law, but that law was coming to people with hearts of stone. Thou shall not do this, thou shall not do this, thou shall not do this. If you do this, this shall happen. And still it could not change them because the hearts were hearts of stone. They were spiritually dead people. They were spiritually dead people. So God realized, no, I better make them alive again. They are a different creature from the creature I wanted them to be. You get what I mean? You, it is just like I had a very wonderful story. I was in high school. Do you know how I know that it's a true story? It's a reverend who told it. Yeah, so if, if you're there, you, if you start doubting, if it's true or fiction, it's true. Praise the Lord. Yeah, if, if you, you think it's fiction, keep it to yourself. You're not holy. That, so, there was, <laughs> so there was this cat, this, this, this family got a cat. And they loved that cat and they said, what if this cat becomes a family member, like a human being? Yeah. So the, 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 the cat became like a human being, a servant. So they would, the, 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 the cat is the one that used to serve breakfast. I'm seeing every person that's not holy, I can see the ones that are not holy. So it would come with that tray and you see every day it's bring bacon, sausages, ham, and it knew how to balance, yeah. And it would put on the table. And you see, the wife and husband would high-five themselves. You see, I told you, he's one of us. 
if he was still a cat, he would have eaten the bacon. He would have eaten the sausages. He's one of us. And he would bring bacon, you know, every day. <laughs> but one day, as, one day as he's taking to the table, I think the smell was, was so nice and so strong. So dropped that tray, ate all the bacon and the sausages, and ran away. Realize it's better to be a cat than, you see, went away. True story. True story. Yeah, you know, our reverend was not a liar. So, that is how these human beings were without a new heart. They are still a, a cat. They are a different creature. They are not in the order of God. They are not a God people. They are not a God kind people, a God kind of people. So no matter how God tries to talk to them, you as a human being, no matter how you try to call that cat your family member, we have three children, uh, Jacob, Esau, and this cat, Bob, the cat. It's still a cat. So all that happened in the, in the Old Testament could not make us God's children. We could be given God's principles, we could be given God's norms, we could be given go responsibility of people who are God people, responsibilities they are meant to do, but with that heart, we would eventually drop the bacon, eat it, and run away. You get what I mean? So God realized that no, they need to be regenerated. That's why I said that when we preach salvation, we are not preaching moral modification. We are not preaching change of behavior. We are preaching regeneration. To live the God life, you need to be new, a new creature. The old man has to die. If you need a child, you need that cat to, to die or to, to sell it to a neighbor. Praise the Lord. And go for marriage counseling and learn how to make children. Praise the Lord. And get a, get a third born. Praise Jesus. That cat will never be that third born. They, that third born has to be born. We had to be born of God. We had to be born of God. We could not. They had tried. And that is why God says, I will. You get what I mean? I will. You've, you've heard of the story for the William, what, the sisters, Serena and Venus. Yeah? And how the parents say, let's get children. Let's get two children and let them be. Let's make them tennis stars. You get what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And they got children and the dad started coaching them from when they were young. And they've made a movie about it. What's the movie? They are a very inspirational story. But... They decide, you see, they, they could not get, maybe they had a family dog. They could not turn it into a ten star. You get what I mean? Yeah. Whatever animal they had. And as long as people are not believers, there is no way through them the name of God is going to be sanctified until they are made a new creature, until they are made a new person. And that is why he takes away that heart and gives them a heart, a heart that is now sensitive to the dictates of God. That is what happened in the Garden of Eden. God wanted to continue relating with these people, but they could not. They were different people. They were afraid of him. He would come with love, but they were afraid of him. You know, Cain is lying to him. He's lying to him. He's a very different person. He thinks you can lie to God. Very different person. And that continued happening in the Old Testament up to this generation for everyone who did not receive Christ. And God had a master plan, a very good plan that the devil did not see coming. Praise the Lord. Were you ever in a school where teachers would slap children, students? They are there. They are those teachers who are very good at slapping you. You would realize that they slapped you late at lunchtime when fellow students are. <laughs> when, when, when your colleagues in class are telling you that actually it's, is that, you know, you don't know, your ear just started ringing. You looked around, tears were flowing, and you sat and just continued with the class. Later at lunchtime, people are like, hey, that's love. So you're like, which love? 
Now you start, you're like, oh, that's why the, the effects I feel. It was a slap, yeah. That's the slap that God gave to the devil. He didn't see it coming. He, did, he, didn't, see, he didn't see it coming. Praise the Lord. That's why we are told that if they had known, they would not have crucified the king of glory. They had not. It, it's now at lunchtime that they are being told. They are realizing. Actually, that was all along in God's plan. And Jesus came and made a public spectacle of them. Praise the Lord. The message version says, he paraded them naked. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and I've told you why. I've told you why he paraded them naked. <laughs> okay, I'll not repeat. I see. The, the George, <laughs> George is laughing. He'll fall. <laughs> but <laughs> you see, he says he disarmed them. He disarmed principalities. He, he conquered them. And he paraded them to show people these are defeated. To show us. So naked, it's because if you're naked, you can't pocket. <laughs> so there is no weapon hidden. They, they were paraded. <laughs> they they <laughs> strip. That's why when people go to maximum prison, what do they do? They strip them. And hit them with a horse of water and... So there is nothing that they can hide. There is nothing to sneak in with in prison. But he paraded them. He stripped all the spiritual tyrants. Stripped them. All. So if you think there is any that was, they, they had some power, some, something that they hid. No. He said he marched them naked. So in case there is anything they are hiding, at least it would fall as they march. <laughs> <laughs> he marched them naked through the streets. Yeah, look at the life that he's called us into. Look at this life he's called us into. That we have a defeated for, very defeated. Praise the Lord. Very defeated for. Praise the Lord. Very defeated for. Man, this is what he did. This is what he did for us. The devil didn't see that coming. But he planned it earlier. This is, and, and you see, that's why the Bible tells us that the men of all, the men that prophesied these things, they desired. They really wanted to see. They did not understand. They wanted to see, yes, the kind of salvation that this would be. Imagine Ezekiel writing such things. And he was wondering, how are they going to happen? He waited for us. They were for a better time like this. These were things that were coming for such a time. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, I will put my spirit within you. My spirit within you. I'll take away the stony heart and give you a heart of flesh. And I'll give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit. Now that is with small s. I'll put my spirit. Why? Because I want you to be like me. You're my offspring. I'll put my spirit in you. And he wasn't talking about the Holy Spirit. So your spirit man is a spirit of God. That's why I emphasize that. A small s. Or you can say, I'll put my seed in them. Yes. You're born of an incorruptible. Hallelujah. Yeah, because this is not... Because as we go on, we realize that he, this is not the Holy Spirit he was talking about. Yet he called him my spirit. That is not the Holy Spirit he's talking about. And say, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Why? Because you're the God kind. You get what I mean? You want tennis players? They have to be human beings. Let them just have your DNA. Let them just be human beings. You've already conquered a lot. You're starting from a very high level. You get what I mean? If you come to this place and you want to raise tennis players and you start by getting the dogs and the cats, man, you have a lot of work to do. But as long as you get human beings, it's human beings who play tennis. So if you get human beings, ah, you're already halfway. So you realize if I give them my spirit, these are my statutes, my laws. No, this it will be... I've been giving my statutes and laws to people who are not in our kind, who are not. You get what I mean? 
people who are not like, they are the ones who have been giving this. Hallelujah. It is just like if you want to look for a, 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 a marathon or long, what? Uh, people who run long distance. Huh? You go to Eldoret, you go to Kapsabet, praise the Lord. Yeah, if you go to Mombasa, you will. <laughs> <laughs> in Mombasa maybe you're looking for long <laughs> distance swimmers but no. <laughs> you get what I mean that is not where you start that's not where you start you get what I mean yeah but you go go to Kapsabet go to Baringo go there and as long as you hear names, cha, cha, plimo, cha, cha, you know, you just, and you know that shows people who are ready to run, cha, you know. They, <laughs> eh? cha, 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 everything is, yes, chap, chap, yes. <laughs> yeah, but you see, here in Kenya, when people are going for talent search for, they just know it's Kalenjins you're going to go to. So that's where they will go. All these people coming from America, coming from Asia, that is where they're going. Even people you see coming to train, the videos you will see, they come and train their Ethiopians. Bekele has been here. Where has Bekele gone to train? Not in Mombasa. Go on that side. You get what I mean? Mombasa, you go to relax. You go to lie on the beach eat lobsters. That is where you go. So when God had an assignment, when God wanted to show himself on earth, when he wanted to show whatever skills point to God, he had to have a God kind of people. That could never happen. It could never happen among people who have old hearts, old spirits or dead spirits, he had to make a people who are after his kind. So God wanted his own tribe, his own people. He wanted a tribe of his own, a tribe that has his genetics, a tribe that can do the God things. That is what God was looking for. So he had to give, he, he just had, just like this Chinese sat and said, let's make Yao Ming. God said, let us make our kind. Because you see, that was the original plan. Let's create man in our own image. This one shall be able to propagate the kingdom on earth. And so the devil came to distort that. And God, through Jesus Christ, came and did even a better job. Took us to, 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 to another level. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let's look at it again. Yeah, so he says, they will walk in my statutes. They will, so for, 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 for like for, for, for the Chinese, they knew they, he will be a basketball player. As in, they knew like, there's a high, probab a high probability, praise the Lord. Genetics will not always give you 100%, but it can increase the chance. You get what I mean? Yeah, it will increase the chance. It will, it, it will increase the chances. And... God, for God, it is not just probability. It's a sure deal. Whatever he does, it's not, it's not probability. It is a sure deal. Yeah? And my judgments and do them. They will also keep my judgments and do them. Verse 28. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people and I'll be your God. And I will also save you from all uncleanliness. And I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you and I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field and ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen then shall you remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and abomination. You see, he's talking about, he's talking about uh, that our old nature, 
when we go back to our carnal nature, it is something that we will lose. There is nothing good there. Even today as a believer, when you try to do anything apart from God, that you realize that there is no beauty in it. There is no life in it. And all this that they had been trying to do as they lived their lives, had it was all, like he says, filthy rags. Yeah? Self-righteousness is like filthy rags. But he chose to make a man, to make a God kind of man, a man that is after him. And that is why we get born again. That is why when you see people and you want them to walk in the ways of the Lord, you preach the gospel to them and they become a new creature. And like we were saying, even during the training of evangelism, we were saying uh, the gospel is preached by proclamation. And we had something that has been so wrong said. We had a, a, a training for pastors. And I told the speaker that, you see, people have used this and they've quoted Francis uh, Assis, as the one who said this, Prince of Assis, that is the one who said this and that there is no proof that preach the gospel and if necessary use words. You know, preaching the gospel requires words. People are not there watching your life for so long. Your life should back the words. Praise the Lord. But whenever you see Jesus telling them, go preach, and he sent them, they were going to speak. Because Jesus even spoke to them and told them, you shall not lack what to say. So in other words, the responsibility to preach was to say. So it is so sad the majority of us in the church, especially in Nairobi, we don't win souls. We don't speak to people about Jesus Christ. We think that ah, if we just, we live good. I wonder if we are monitoring or we leave a CCTV camera wherever we pass for, to see, were they checking how I was living? Were they checking how I was walking? Some of them don't have that time. To watch you praise the lord <laughs> they are busy some of them are going to fire you before you finish your first month at that place of work so you better speak to them on the first day praise the lord the gospel is proclaimed that is how look at the case of cornelius i'm sure cornelius had seen christians and he had admired because he did the things christians do and his prayers were even heard by God. An angel came to him. Imagine, an unbeliever had an, an angelic visitation. Many Christians are staying in church praying for angels to visit them. He's an unbeliever. He was so pious in his life that you would almost think he had a relationship with God. Cornelius would sit and talk about encounters. He talks about the hours he spent in prayer. And God is like, Cornelius... Your alms, your prayers have reached in your alms. But he had to send him to a man to speak to him. He had to send him to a man who had the spirit of God. He had to send him to a man who was the God kind. You get it? Chiel Osborne used to say, I am the Christ embassy. When people need visas to our country, they come to me. I'm the embassy. I'm the ambassador. I'm the I'm the, what, what, what are they called? The consular. I'm the one who issues them. So come to me, I'm a Christ embassy. So he had to send him to Peter. Peter, maybe Peter was not even as prayerful. You remember one time when they were praying, when Jesus went to pray, he rebuked them for sleeping. This very time when he sent him to Cornelius, what was Peter doing? But he had gone up to pray. So maybe Cornelius was even more prayerful. But he was not the God kind. He required one who was the God kind to come and introduce him to God. To come and give him a visa to this kingdom. One that was God kind. He required. So Jesus would, God would have told Cornelius, you go around Joppa, stay there for four days and watch Peter. You watch his life. And that's what he would have told him. Or he would have told Peter, Peter, I want you to go where Cornelius lives and just live, live, live around there. No. Yeah, sleep in life. Yeah. He had to preach, he had to speak. That's what you see, Paul. You see, these people who arrested Paul, you think they didn't know his lifestyle? They're the ones, guards were around him, they knew his lifestyle. But what did he do? He spoke to them. He used to speak before Agrippa. 
the jailer who had who was guarding them when the, the chains fell off their what? With seeing even the manifestation of the power of God, he did not get born again. Paul had to speak to him, Paul and Silas, and tell him, repent, this and this, be baptized, and your whole household shall be saved. He had to proclaim, he had to speak the gospel. Because you see, our words now are life-giving words. The first, the, 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 the first Adam was a living soul. The last Adam was a life-giving spirit. And now the life-giving spirit is the one that we carry. So as we speak to this, we are giving them life. We are giving them life. And you see, this, this, this became so strong, or so, so clear to me because of missions also. Because you see, going for these missions now, East, East Pokot is one of the places that we've gone, but I've gone to, East Pokot people are suffering. Praise the Lord. I've gone to some places that are worse than East Pokot. I know you may wonder which place is that. Yeah. I've gone to, yeah, I've gone to places that are worse. Yeah. I've told you, I've gone to a place where they put for me, they made for me grass to sleep. And the special grass, they dried it because a man of God is coming. You get what I mean? That's the best they could offer. Those are the beddings. So you can imagine how they slept. So they prepared grass for me. It was there prepared specifically for the pastor. And for the few days I was there, that's what I slept on. Just put on my sweat and sleep. And so in such places, so I'm looking at those people. The people there had never seen a car. They've never seen a car. This is deep, deep in the island. As on an island in Lake Victoria, they now went to a smaller island deep in there. So, cars are not there. There are no roads there. They're just small, you know, things like needs are road there. These people fish. They eat fish. They sleep around. Many have HIV. And what is so bad is that all these places have booze, known brands. That would be very painful to me. Like these people know, don't know about Jesus. But you can see a bottle of Guinness. You're like, Guinness has reached here before Jesus. Jesus who lived on this earth before Guinness was introduced. Go to East Pocot. We went, we went and they have small bars. They use reeds to build. They have bars there. And there's a place where we went. We, we went, there's a, we were, what were we going to? When we had gone to, to, to fetch water, there's a place where I went. I went with Alex and Reverend Pat. And we found many bottles broken. Bottles of known liquor, Tasca, what? There is no Bible in that whole place. Bibles have not reached, but liquor has reached there. I'm like, hey, the people of this world are very aggressive in what they do. You know, you as a church, as church, we feel like it's not worth it to go that way. It doesn't make financial sense. Yeah? East African breweries doesn't feel that way. It feels that as long as they are people, most probably they don't even recover that money. Most probably. Like to get it there is a lot of work. But you see, they are getting their brand all over. One day it will pay for them. And even this place I was, that is what was there. People are drunkards. They resigned. You know, like HIV, you know, even like even when people come try to tell them, oh, you, this is how you control HIV. They are like, no, we are all going to die. As in hopeless. Hopeless people. They don't care. So being in such a place, because I went, you know, you're thinking, wow, we should start bringing clothes for these people. Uh, we should bring some food. Maybe we should bring education. Maybe we should. And you know, then it hit me. How much shall we do? And I just remembered what, God, what Jesus told Judas Iscariot. The poor you will always have. So it's not that... We should not do charity, and you've seen, we are doing, when we go to his pocket, we take things, or, like, it's good to do that. But it came so strong to me that none of those things is as important as giving them Jesus. You're never going to solve all those problems. You can bring all the clothes, you can bring all the food, you can bring everything you want. But when you give these people Jesus, you see how they light up. 
There's one guy that got born again there. He was disturbing us as I was preaching. He was disturbing. And imagine that is deep in Uganda, deep in Lake Victoria. But he was called Kabaya. I don't know how they, they got to know that Swahili word. Yes, he was called Kabaya. This is disturbing, disturbing. You know, I, I tried to check on Facebook to see because I had taken those photos I posted. It was way back before I came to Kenya, but I would taken those photos in. I checked on Facebook, I wasn't seeing them, so I was wondering. Somebody, how can God delete my photos? But this guy kept, he was disturbing and so he, uh, people are warning him. So he leaves. So we think he's going to get stones or get more goons come disrupt us. So he comes back with a black bag full of weed. You know, he brings his like pastor. I want to get born again. I'm no longer a kabaya from today. And he kneels. And I was still preaching. He interrupted like that. And he said, I left that island feeling fulfilled. I left. I was seeing the naked children. I was seeing the pain. I was seeing the how they seem to be marginalized, you know. And those are things that can give you sleepless nights. Every day you're like, how can human beings live? You know, you feel like these are human beings living below even what an, how animals live. You get what I mean? Animals have houses. We take them to a vet. We wash them. We do, you know, you look at these people living up. Like, that's not the life that God wants them to live. But you see, once you give them Christ, yeah, you've given them the most important thing. The other things can come, but even if they never come. So it has been a trick of the devil to lie to us as the church to put charity ahead of regeneration, ahead of preaching the gospel. The gospel should come before. Because all these things, like he says, we can take clothes, we can take schools and do this and can educate them. You're educating an unbeliever. So still it sits. Somebody headed to hell with all the education. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I became so strong. And now I see like God is saying, he, he's getting this, he wants to get the children of Israel out of these tribes, bring them to himself, make them his people. To God, that was what was first necessary. Then later we see what he's telling them. Now, this can also have very more spiritual implication, but from here he's telling them how they shall be fruitful. And you know, all these blessings that he would have talked about, he realized those are not the most important things. They had had them. They had lived in lands that they had been blessed. They lived in crops. When they were in Egypt, darkness came. Goshen had no darkness. You know, that uh, hailstorm came. Goshen was free. So they had lived, they had enjoyed all these things. But God is telling them the priority is this. You get a new heart. You get a new spirit. You become my people. Then these other things can come. Hallelujah. This is the most important thing that God has for us. And understanding this, looking at Ezekiel sharing this and understanding, uh, understanding, what, understanding what God wants for us. First of all, it makes you feel so special. This makes me feel so special. That it was God's idea. Because I, I think about it, I'm like, what if God had left it to us? I don't think I would ever be able to make the decision. I don't think I would ever come to a place where I would feel like, now it's time to change my life around. But I'm so glad that he's the one who began the work. He tells us in Romans that while we were without strength, in due time, we were without strength. There was no, there, there was no strength even to say, no, I need a better life. Th that strength was not there. That will was, there was no power of will to turn to God. See, scarcely can a man die for a righteous man. Scarcely can one give their life for a righteous man. Scarcely. Very scarcely. But Jesus did not give his life for righteous men. He gave his life for the ungodly, the unrighteous. His enemies. Yeah? Yeah? So that's the, the, that um, there is a time I was explained, I think when we were doing consecration, I was explained to us what propitiation means. Yeah? Propitiation is more than just paying. Propitiation is more than just saying, have this money. Propitiation is like, I took your phone, 
and I broke it. Praise the Lord. And it was a phone that you loved. You know, everyone loves their phone. You know, some people think that if, if it's not an iPhone, you don't love it. But everyone loves their phone. <laughs> Hallelujah. They value their phone. Praise the Lord. So I'm not going to speak about the brands because you love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steve is acting like he doesn't love his but, but so imagine if maybe I crashed that phone and I'm like oh how much was, was your phone whatever it was praise the Lord <laughs> I'll also not say that figure but whatever it was okay let me just use a figure <laughs> I know some people say oh my phone can't amount to that or, you know. well, let me say your phone was a hundred thousand a thousand dollars, yeah? A thousand dollars. And I come and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Here is a thousand dollars. Go buy a new one. You see, already the phone was old, so it has depreciated. So what I'm giving you is already higher than it's that current value. So, you know, that would be enough. Like, wow, he's given me money to get a new phone. But I'm like, I know that I've also inconvenienced you. Now the time you're going to be off air, even if it's one hour looking for a phone, setting up and all that. So I'm like, have another a thousand dollars for inconvenience. Then I say, <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm a man of self control. I'm not going, no, I'm self control. It's very tempting, but I'm self controlled. I'm not going to give out my money. So, I add you another one and say, I'm really so sorry. I, I, I know you liked its cover. I know you had taken screenshots. I know there are things you are not backed up. I know. And you see, eventually I've given you like $9,000. And the phone was $1,000. That is propitiation. Jesus was the propitiation of our sins. And who was he paying? Himself, God. You, you, you know, you, you, like, it didn't make sense. It, that is too much. That's extravagant. And so people criticizing uh, the song. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. But you see, if you look at it in the context, yeah, it, it, it seems reckless. Yeah, it's true God is not reckless, but it seems reckless. Like, we, we, are, we were the ones to pay that. But you come for us and you choose to pay it still. You know? Propitiation for our sins. He has loved us. He has chosen us. He wanted to make us the good kind. And why is it that many times it is hard for people to understand or to get to know this? It is because of that lack of understanding of spirit, soul, and body, like I have said. And tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If any man be in Christ is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. And all things are, all things are of God. So many times one will wonder, how am I a new creature? He put a new spirit. He said, a new spirit I'll put in them. And my spirit I'll put in them. Yeah, A new spirit I'll put in them. Then my spirit I'll put in them. And that spirit is as perfect as Christ is. He says, he who is joined to Christ is one. Yeah. He that is joined to Christ is one spirit with him. So you are one spirit with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Perfect as he is. In Ephesians, he tells us, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, 14 to 14. He tells us how you are sealed by the spirit of promise the Holy Spirit that you received, you are sealed. Your spirit man was sealed. Your spirit man is the real you. You are spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. And as long as we identify ourselves just as the body or the soul, we're never going to come to understand this truth. But once we understand who we are and what he did for us like this, the soul and the body will follow suit. 
we will see these results. And that's why I was saying that what he spoke there has spiritual implication. He was speaking about they will not be barren, they will be fruitful. Now, the fruit that you will see from your spirit is what affects when, when your soul is aligned, when now you're bearing fruit. And he says, this is the fruit of the spirit. Now, he calls it the fruit of the spirit. But literally, that is, whatever is happening is in the soulish realm. Joy, peace, kindness. You, you, you get what I mean? So when he was speaking to them and he's telling them that now they will get into this, their own land, and they will bear fruit, they will do this. Once you understand your spirit being, that you are a spirit being, and all these things he talks about in Ephesians 1, 3, uh, how he says, bless us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Second Peter 1, 3, um, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. You know, all these things have been put in past tense and you're wondering how. How has he done all these things? These things are locked up in your spirit man. They are locked up in your spirit man. And as we take the word of God and listen to the word of God, hear the word of God, our soulish realm, our soulish, our soul is renewed. Our mind is renewed by the word of God. And when our mind is renewed, we tap on that which is already in our spirit man. Praise the Lord. We re, whatever is in our spirit man is now released and it can affect our day-to-day -day life and that is bearing fruit. All of a sudden people wonder, this guy used to be, you know, now people come to this church and they wonder, this is a very happy church. Some of you are never happy until you came here. Now you started hearing, now you realize it's okay to laugh in church. It's, but you, you are gloomy. And gloom is not the fruit of the Spirit. There is nothing spiritual about having a long face. Praise the Lord. And you see, that is why it is very difficult for people. People come from the world there. They are clubbing. You know, they are you know they are excited and you tell them they are born then they come to church and everyone is like it's like a museum you know they are they are wondering so this is what you call better than that you know they are wondering people are not even excited of their own teachings you know people think that at least you should be excited that what they are teaching is about this new life you've told me about but, but you're not excited about even the teachings about the new life you're telling me about so they sit and they wonder, hey, this child. So you have to be ugly to be an intercessor. You know, they, they are just like. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you intercede. You're serious. You're doing God's business. Shh. <laughs> Smelling like John the Baptist. <laughs> and by the Baptist was not his surname. It was, it was what he did, you know. <laughs> yeah, today people have named their children John the Baptist. They, they think his name was John the Baptist. <laughs> but <laughs> but look at what I'm saying. When you got born again, that joy was always there in your spirit. But you see, you had to come in a place where the word of God is taught. Many times we don't see this God kind of life because our mind is not renewed. So the life is there. The life is there. It's there inside you. He says that in Romans chapter 5, he tells us that his love has been shed abroad in our hearts. But you see, there are Christians who think they can't love. There are Christians who think no, 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 no. You know, we think it has to come from out. It is in there. So as you get your mind, that's why he tells us in, in Romans uh, 12 too, be not conformed to the sons of this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind. Be transformed by renewing of, because if you renew your mind, your mind, which is, uh, th this, is, this, is, this, is this is how it would work. Your spirit man is deep inside there. Yeah? And so I've drawn like three circles. Your spirit man, then the soul, then your body. Your spirit man is the one that relates with the divine, with deity, with God. That's your spirit man, with the spirit world. Your soul is your intellect, your mind, your emotions. Your, that is your soul. 
Your body is that case that we are seeing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Some people are looking at them so like, is this a case? Yeah, it is, it, it is that body that we are able to tell, oh, this one is tall, this one is short, this one is light skin, this one is, oh, so and so is Freddy, yeah, you know. That is the body that we can look at. Yeah. And so we can relate with the body, we can touch the body. We can interact with the body. We can interact with the soul. Your mind, your intellect, we can inter interact by words, by showing you something. Eyes, ears, these are gates to our soul, to our, our mind. And that is why you realize, like, I can inflict pain on your body by, you know, I can inflict pain on your body by that. But the pain to your soul can be worse than the pain on your body. I can say something to you and for generations you'll never forget it. That hurt me. But you say, I didn't touch you. But either he did something or said something. So, but your spirit, it's very hard to know how to interact with the spirit. It's very hard. The only way we can get in touch with the spirit or get to know how our spirit is, is through the word of God. It's by the word of God. For your body, you can go to a mirror and you look at a mirror. You can tell, oh, my nose has grown bigger. Just by looking at a mirror. You can know how your soul is. Like, ah, I'm not happy today. I'm anxious today. I'm, I'm worried about this. Even people can tell what is going on in your soul. Like, eh, he doesn't look happy today. He's so excited today. What's going on in your soul. But it's hard to tell what's going on in your spirit, man. He tells us in... Uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, it tells us, but we with unveiled faces, beholding as in a mirror, yeah, New King James says in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory by the Spirit of God. That as we behold in, which image? The image that is in the mirror. That image in the mirror is the image of Christ. And that image of Christ is the image in your spirit man. Because he that is joined to him is one spirit with him. So we can go to the word of God and see how our spirit man looks. And you see, you live the way you live because you've learned to believe your physical mirror. Yeah. And you live the way you live. A lot of how you live is because you saw yourself in the mirror. You get what I mean? Yeah. That's why you keep, you keep touching your hair that you've never seen. But you, you know you saw in the mirror. So you'll do that. You just believe it is that. When, 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 you, lift a, when you lift a hanky, you don't, you don't do this. You do this. Because the mirror has told you that your eyes are here. You've never seen your eyes. You, you, you know, but the mirror told you that this is where they are. That's what the mirror told you. The mirror told you your forehead is here, not here. That's what the, and you've believed it. You've grown to trust that mirror. In physics, we are even told that that image is not perfect. Lateral inverted, left is right, and you know, but you trust that mirror. Now, for your spirit man, you can learn to trust the word of God, it is the mirror for the spirit man. And so, if you look in the mirror, and in the mirror, the mirror is telling you, You shall be the head and not the tail. That is who you are. And as you behold, you see, it says, We with unveiled faces, beholding it is continuous. You keep in that mirror, you see. Uh, I saw when our daughter, you know, the first time she's seeing, she's looking in the mirror. Literally, she could not relate so much. But you see, as she kept looking, so she would move her hand and she realized it's actually, it's mine. That hand is mine. So now she can use a mirror and she knows she is the one. She, she didn't look once and say, I don't understand this. So you look here and you're like, how am I a new creature? You look in the mirror. And you see, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. I'm not cursed. I'm blessed. I'm not, you know, I'm full of love. I'm full of this. You behold that. Now, as you behold that, your soulish realm or your soul, the moment you get born again, your soul is not saved. And that is why it's possible that somebody is born again today and you have bad thoughts the next day. You failed mathematics last time. You come back this time. You're born again. You're a new creature. 
And you're like, Kai, I didn't see that new creature in that exam. You know, you're wondering where the new creature was as you did the exam. It is because you are looking in the wrong place. The new creature is the spirit. But now as you, you see, as you take on, you look in the mirror and you see what is of the spirit. Now that, he says, hey, there is a lot that I can get in. This, this is something that I can talk and talk and talk and go on. But he talks about the washing of the water of the word of God. That the word of God cleans us. The word, the, it, it, it's water that washes us. From, in Hebrews, he tells us that almost by the blood, all things are cleansed by the blood. Almost. Some things are not cleansed by the blood. Almost. Almost. So there is uncleanliness that is taken away by, there is uncleanliness that is not seen. But it is taken away by the water of the word of God. You just believing that you will never amount to anything is not a sin, but it is uncleanness. That is not the God kind of life. But you see, you grew up somewhere, like you are beaten by life. This was spoken to you by your parents. Your relatives say this until you just feel. But you see, as you behold, as you take his word, the washing of the water of the word, now those things, like if it was in that circle, the second circle of the soul, I would have put there like black spots and what. But as the word comes, now those are erased by the word. They are erased by the word. Then you start thinking like your spirit man thinks. Your soul starts thinking like your spirit man thinks. And you know what is produced? What we call faith. What we call faith is like a spark. What we call faith is like that moment when your, your soul finally agrees with your spirit man. Now that's faith. It is released and it affects your body. It affects your day-to-day -day life. That is why he tells us this. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. So you get born again by just believing in your heart. And many of us think, because we were told that we get born again by confessing. That's not what the Bible says. Actually, the prayer we pray, Lord, you know, if it was really dependent on that to get born again, then we would all be praying the same prayer. Why should it be different? You get what I mean? If it was dependent about that prayer, God would have given us a very particular prayer. This is what you must pray. Do you ever see anybody in the, in the early church in, in the book of Acts, do you ever see anyone saying the confession prayer? Did you hear Cornelius say it? But he spoke in tongues. It's with the heart that man believes unto righteousness. You get born, it's with the heart. But he says confession is made unto salvation. Salvation is soteria, sozo, vibrant, guilt-free, health, so he says it is with the confession. What, what is confession? Confession means to say the same thing. To agree with God. So as you look in the mirror, you realize, you look in the mirror and you realize, no, you're not amounting to nothing. You are a child of God. You are a chosen person. You are a peculiar person. You are royalty. You see that. Now that is, the water is washing your soul. Those, those dirty things you believe, that uncleanness is disappearing. And as that uncleanness disappears, you see, you start speaking that way. As you start speaking that way, why do you speak? You speak because you believe. Paul said, we speak. Yeah, we, yeah we've believed and we speak. Yeah, we, so that is confession. So salvation comes, why? Because you're confessing what has happened in your spirit man. So your mind is renewed and you can release that. And now that is what we call faith. I've told you this testimony of how I got healed when I got healed of sinusitis. I knew scriptures. I used to recite, uh, by his stripes I was healed, by his stripes I was healed. But I'd seen many, you know, because you just hang around people. People get healed gradually. People go to hospital, then they get healed. People. So you see, that is uncleanness in your mind also. For you believing that things always need to be that way. That is uncleanness. So by getting in this word over and over, and I could, you know, I, I, I could memorize, I could memorize um, Isaiah 53, I could memorize from verse 1 up, I think, to verse 10, I could memorize it. Uh, 1 Peter 2.24, I could memorize that. 2.24, I could memorize that. There are many scriptures I could memorize about healing. But you see, my mind was being read. The good thing is that I didn't stop memorizing and reading them. Because he says, beholding in a mirror, continuous, as you keep beholding, you're being transformed into that image. Eventually, 
my soul caught up. Eventually, my mind caught up. And one day, I just knew that 2,000 years ago, I was healed. Now, that faith was released, and my body was healed. I didn't need to check for the symptoms. I, I just knew. So that had always been, that healing power, that divine health had always been in my spirit man. But it is until my mind caught up. It is until my soul caught up. And now confession is for that. Confession now releases. Now that salvation happens. Soteria happens. So every day, and that is why he, say, he talks about salvation. There are many times you've seen the New Testament talks about salvation as a continuous thing. He says, we who are being saved. You know, he says, until we get the final reward of, of this redemption, the salvation of our souls, who, him that endures to the end shall be saved. He talks about that. So you get born again, but your soul is being renewed every day. It's being saved. And now you can release that which is inside you. When you release it and life happens. Praise the Lord. Life happens. So look in that mirror. Look in the heart of God. James also talks about that. He says, we are be doers of the word and not hearers only. And he tells us it is like a man who looks at himself in the mirror and he walks around and forgets what manner of man he is. But he says, he who beholds in the perfect law of liberty. What is the perfect law of liberty? It is the word of God in the light of the New Testament, in the light of what Christ has done. That is the law of liberty. The law of Moses was not the law of liberty. It was the law of bondage. When he says the law of liberty, he's talking about the word of God in the light of what Jesus has done on the cross. That is the law of liberty. So that's how we renew our mind. We renew our mind and faith happens. That spark happens. Yeah? One example we can see in the Bible is Peter walking on water. Jesus is the word of God. Yeah? He is the image of the invisible God, the express image of the invisible God. Peter told Jesus, Bid me that I come and walk on what? And Jesus said, come. As long as Peter looked at Jesus, he was turned into the likeness of, he could walk on water as long as he looked at Jesus. As he kept beholding, when he took his eyes off, he turned into Peter and started sinking. As you behold. He said, oh, today I read the scripture, I believed and I was not healed. No, keep beholding. I, I, I don't really believe. Sometimes I feel like my sins were not fully. He, keep beholding. I was telling you the testimony of Joyce Meyer. She got born again and she had to read and meditate on scriptures about the love of God for a whole year. A whole year for her to be convinced. Because in her spirit man, that love was already there. Her soulish man could not reconcile that. Because she's like, her dad raped her over 200 times. Where was this God of love? Do you see how that is uncleanness that was sown in there? It is not sin for her to be traumatized, for her to remain. It's not sin. But it is uncleanness. It, it, it negates what, what should flow. It is like having a pipe. Life should flow. It says life should come from the inside. Life should come from those. Eh? You know, our spirit, our spirit is the God's candlelight, is God's flashlight. Like whatever God wants to do in our lives, it is through our spirit man that that light comes out. But imagine if it was like a pipe. Water is this side. The soul is that tap. And the body is this side where you need to receive. Renewing your, 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 your mind with the word of God is like you opening that tap. You're unblocking, you're removing whatever was blocking there. An unrenewed mind is like that there's a blockage in the pipe. It does not mean there is no water, but the water will not flow. So the life of God is in you. The power of God is in you. The power that raised him from the dead. He says that power that works toward us. The same power that was exerted in him when he raised him from the dead. All that is in you. Why isn't it flowing? Mind renewal. Check the word of God. He said that same thing about hearing the voice of God. No believer cannot hear the voice of God like people say. You know, it's oxymoron to say, I'm born again, but I don't hear God. How did you get born again? Because, you know, he, he, he must call you for you to get born again. How did you get born again? You heard him calling. So as long as you're born again, you can hear God. And like I've said, how spirit, soul, and body is very crucial. I remember this was 
very key. Especially that time I really started seeing like the prophetic operate in my life. Like, you know, because I told you there is a time I would have up to 300 visions in one day and I'm writing. And you know, I would sit in a place and get words of knowledge, even when I don't want, until I felt like God was bothering me. You know, like God, why? Like, why did you speak to me about that person? Like, why are you disturbing me? I'm not the preacher. You know, like I would sit in a service and I just have a word about almost everyone I have. You know, you're walking on the street. You, you know, you've got, even when I've gone to sin. My God, for your sake, I've come to sin. <laughs> so, but a time came where, now, like this, a time I gave, I gave a word of knowledge. So I gave a word of knowledge about a lady. I said, there's a lady here. You're seated on the right side, and last night you had a dream. That this, I described the dream that she had, and I told her, and you woke up with a stiff neck. Your neck is painful and all this. Uh, come, let me pray for you. And the lady came, but she did not come. I think I said left, but she came from, okay, she didn't come from the side, I said. But everything else she described was the dream. Everything was exactly like I told her. Yeah? So that bothered me for so long because I didn't feel like you, you see like in here in what I knew in the spirit what I had from I didn't feel like there's a distortion I'm like God you said left or whichever side I don't remember the side. but God this is the side you said so I kept wondering kept bothering me and now that is when God started showing me about the word and fully to understand spirit soul and body the last Three or four words of knowledge I had given in the fellowship. These people were seated on that particular side. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That was still embedded in my soulish realm. As this message was coming from the spirit realm, it carried, it found this in the soulish realm. And that is why he says we prophesy in pattern, but because for majority the mind is still being renewed. So many times it comes out with a bit of human bias, a bit of, you know, you get a prophecy. I remember there is somebody that I was praying for and the prophecy I was giving them, and, and you know, I felt like I was hearing God. I was casting demons out of them and cast demons out of them. And you see, I'm hearing like God is telling me that these demons are because of where they went to fellowship. That particular church. Like these demons were put in. And I cast out the demons and the demons came out and that lady became free. Right now, I think she's in where? Turkey or Qatar? One of those countries. And you see, later I realized that I was wrong. Actually, now I love this particular man of God that I was telling her it's because you went there. But why? Because growing up as children, we were told that man of God is a devil worshiper. That man of God is, you, you get what I mean? So that was in my soulish realm. Do you see why it's so, that's why I tell you like normally when People, when God tells me about this, there is a prophetic gift on so and so, I tell you, get in the word of God. Get in the word of God. Otherwise, you're just going to be prophesying, oh, you should marry so and so. You see, all these guys you're hearing, oh, so and so is the one you're meant to marry. They are not reading the word. Yeah, otherwise, they would have prophecies that are of serious agenda than who should be your boyfriend and what. You go, yeah, you go to churches and hear all the prophecies about so and so should be your boyfriend. Oh, you isn't God telling you. The, uh, no. They just want that person for you. And they think it is. So sometimes they are not lying, but they are wrong. Why do I say they are not lying? It's not their intention. They really think they had God say that. And that is why even when people come, you see when people get born again, especially people coming from the occult world and what, I want them to sit, be discipled, sit in the word of God. As we get people to testify, oh, so and so as a devil worshiper, come and testify. They still have an unrenewed mind. And there are things they are going to say. They are going to tell you who they saw in hell. Why? Because they always told that person is wrong. They're always going to say things that, things that, they, you know, had oh, so and so, so and so in hell. Why was he in hell? Because he didn't pay tithe. Why was he? Why? Because they grew up in a church where that is what is preached. So they are not lying. They are not trying to lie. But whatever is coming is, meet, is coming into the soulish realm where there are still many impurities. And that is why one of the greatest what? 
attributes of maturity in the prophetic ministry is silence. You get what I mean? As you grow in the prophetic, you learn not to say whatever you see or whatever you hear. You see, when, when, when we are growing, when we are, growing, when, when we are just starting to, to, to prophesy, most of the time, we think that what, we don't know what we are to keep quiet about and what we are to utter. So whatever comes, you say, oh, ah, I, you see, I, I, when I looked at you, I saw God showed me this tree, but the leaves are blue. Does it make sense? And, and, and in the end, it doesn't make sense to both of us. <laughs> you get what I mean? Yeah, after, it doesn't make sense to both of us. And, and we, we all go home disappointed. The prophet and the... <laughs> the recipient. We all go home. Yeah, I'm telling you that, you know, like during that, you know, I thought that I, I must prophesy in every service. So every service we had, I had to prophesy to somebody. I had to prophesy to somebody. I have to prophesy to somebody. But you see, as you grow, you realize that there are things that you see, and even when you speak to people, you don't even tell them it's prophecy. You get know what I mean? Yeah. You reach and you sit down with people and you tell them, yeah, I would like you to try this and this and this and this. And you see, then you realize that also in the ministry of Paul as he grows up, as he goes on in his ministry. He says, I perceive. Ah, you're like Paul. You get what I mean? So it, 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 it takes a lot, but it is the word of God. And that is why we should love the word of God. We should, as we pray, we love the word of God. Love the word of God. Love the word of God. Take it in. Pray in tongues as you take it in. Your mind is being renewed you will see how much is released from the inside of you. You will see how much that God starts doing in your life. Things happening around your life. And there are things that you will just start understanding. Not necessarily because somebody taught it exactly. There is a way you will understand things. Things will not be confusing like they were. You start realizing your prophecies are, are, are clear. You're not just seeing a cloud, then a fish in the cloud. Then you you know. I know. You know, I know this. Normally, very pro prophetic people struggle with these things. I know some people may not understand. But yeah, you see many things that you don't understand. Many things that are vague. In your spirit man, they are perfect and he knows them clearly. But your, your soul is so young and needs to be, needs to be renewed, needs to be to take in the word of God. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for everyone that came today. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your power. Thank you that it's you who took the hearts of stone from us and gave us the hearts of flesh. That it is you who works in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Thank you for your anointing upon your children, your people that are here. That like you have said, that you will sanctify your name through them. Let your glory be seen in every life here. That as they lay hands on the sick and healing is seen, that your name will be sanctified. As they speak the word and it comes out with such an anointing to bring conviction, to bring peace, to bring love, encouragement that your name will be sanctified and glorified and that they will bear fruit that even for this weekend they will see fruit they will see changes in their lives things that have seemed to be permanent things they think are permanent that are not of you I let everyone realize that they are the ones you've given authority to take these things out of their way. If it is sickness of their parents, relatives, siblings, that they have all it takes because of the life that you have put in them, the new DNA that they carry to see miracles, to see signs and wonders, to see your goodness. And above all, let everyone here and those who will watch this 
get to know you more, fall deeper in love with you, that the reality of who you are should dawn on them in a fresh way every day. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.